So we're conscious because we're part of the story that the brain tells itself. Yes, we only are conscious inside of the story. And we are inside, we are characters in a, in a story that the brain is telling itself. And we can talk across stories. So here we are. Right. Now, here's where I'm having trouble. Because if I write a story, Lord of the Rings, for example, mm -hmm. is Frodo Baggins actually feeling something? Or is he just scribbles on a paper? Just because it's a story doesn't mean it has to have experiences associated with it. So, so it, it why do we? The uh, question is, what do you mean by is? Right. So uh, visit the story. It sounds like it sounds like Bill Clinton. Yeah. It depends upon what the meaning of the word is. Yes. Yes. So it, it has to do with the question of uh, what's being taken as the uh, of of reality. Uh, I think that a reality that cannot be experienced is very unsatisfying, right? It's not the reality that most people would refer to. The experience uh, of reality is something that is virtual. It's something that's it's the experience of the VR generated by your mind. Right? It's a virtual reality that you inhabit as a non-player character. And the uh, non-player character is generated by the mind as well to describe the interactions of the organism with the world. Right? It's a story about what the organism does in the world. And it's the best story that uh, the mind can come up with. And uh, this story is being used to inform the behavior of the organism. And you cannot break out of the story. That's why the story is real to you. So the, the thing is to uh, to Frodo, his feelings are real in, in the story. To us, they're not, because we see this from the outside. We see how this thing can be constructed. We can even change the story if we have a pen and paper and can make him feel something different. But uh, to Frodo himself, it doesn't make sense that his feelings are real to him unless uh, we write into the story that they suddenly don't feel real to him anymore. Right. Give me a scenario where you can write and make a, a conscious being from your writing of a story. Do you just write Frodo now feels so and so and then Frodo actually does feel so and so? So it, it doesn't work with natural language. You have to use a functional language that uh, is it's basically not just uh, giving rise to a description of Fro what Frodo is doing, but you need to have a functional implementation of an agent in an environment. Right, so you need to have something like a representation of Middle Earth and you need to have a control agent inside of Middle Earth that is being controlled by uh, uh, Frodo's self. And uh, Frodo's self is a model of what Frodo is. And it's a model of basically the affordances of that agent and the state of that agent that is driven by that control model. And uh, so uh, this control model is going to contain thoughts uh, that are the result of Frodo's interaction with Frodo's environment and uh, the thoughts when Frodo is implemented properly will reflect on the needs that this agent has. And uh, the needs uh, are in the agent because they're being programmed into it, right? It behaves according to these needs. And the, the, if the model is adequate and is con conforming to, to those needs, then this model is representing uh, pleasure and pain in such a way that Frodo would describe them similar to the way that we would describe pleasure and pain. And he would describe them as his thoughts because that's the best uh, uh, implementation of its control model that Frodo's mind can come up with. So the language that is being used is not a natural language, it's not uh, English words or something. It's uh, a functional language. It's uh, a programming language in a way. So can you then take that and simulate a small consciousness? Let's, because we mentioned that it's extremely complex to do something like a human, at least at this, at least yes. in 2020. Can we make a small conscious agent? I think that we can, but uh, if the agent is too small, it's very difficult to ascribe an interesting type of consciousness to it. And the biggest difficulty is uh, if you have a conscious system that is not able to attend to anything meaningful that we can relate to, how can we say that it tends to anything? And in a way, the biggest unsolved problem of artificial intelligence is not consciousness, it's uh, understanding. And understanding means that we map everything that we perceive uh, onto a unified model of the universe, more or less unified. But it's uh, we basically explain something by creating a relationship to a unified meaning. And the unified meaning is our model of the world. And everything that we perceive, we are able to integrate into this model of the world. And this is something that our AI systems are so far incapable of doing. I think we are getting there, but uh, yeah.